and welcome back to M365 Voice. Uh, we're coming to you again from the Microsoft Ignite 2019 conference in Orlando, Florida. Today is the last day of Ignite and the, the week feels like it's flown by, yet it feels like we've been here for a month. Um, there's been so much going on and we're really fortunate uh, to have another special guest with us today. Um, I'm Antonio Mayo. I'm Mike Marrani and I'm pleased to welcome Caruana Gattino, Director of Customer Advocacy Group at Microsoft. And um, we have had a lot of things about Microsoft Ignite. So why don't you introduce yourself and we get going. I will, I will. Hello everyone. It's nice to be here. Thank you both for asking me to come to be on your show. Um, yeah, if, if you feel like you've been here for a month, you can imagine that I feel like I've been here for a really long time. It's been very busy and we are um, humbled and amazed at the reaction to all the announcements that we've had and the product in general. I just feel like you know, it, when we started, I've been with Teams for three and a half years before Preview and, you know, helping people understand what it was we were trying to do. And now um, people are starting to awaken to that journey and more and more people are coming. So it's pretty, pretty amazing. But I was sharing with somebody the other day also, it's also amazing time to be at Microsoft. Innovation isn't just happening in Teams. It's happening all across the con uh, company in, in Azure, in SharePoint, other parts of office you know all across in our devices area so i'm really excited to be at microsoft right now and uh, yes i get to lead the customer advocacy group uh, for microsoft teams so working with customers getting feedback working on the quality of the product and just really having a lovely time awesome um so ignite this mm -hmm. is what everyone waits for to hear all about the great announcements we've had a lot of long lists a lot of announcements a very long list of teams and azure and everything else and mm -hmm. all the office and the devices that you mentioned what are the most exciting announcements for you well i think what makes me excited is what is i know this is going to sound really geeky but what makes me excited <laughs> is what makes my customers excited right. and i think that the private channels uh, general announcement was a really big one and because it's really going to help with this core concern that people had about team sprawl and being able to have, for those of you who don't know what private channels are, it's being able to have like a subset, a, a, a focused conversation area for a subset of people in your team uh, at, from those uh, core audience and really being able to deliver that. If people waited a long time for it, we yep. know that they waited a long Since time. Since day one. Yes, they did. <laughs> and so it's here, it's general availability, people should have it in their tenants. Um, that was really exciting for us in teams awesome. uh, but you know if you haven't seen the blog post it was nine pages long that's another exciting thing there was just so much there, there such really a rich was, yeah. area meeting yeah. improvements live events the industry verticals just everything that we're doing right and uh, a lot of it is things that, that don't make the blog post around quality improvements and really taking time to think about the fit and finish of the product, which we've always done, but we have a special focus on right now. Uh, it's really um, exciting. So it was good. Awesome. And I, last we checked yesterday, the blog post had 123,000 visitors yes. since yes. Monday. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And that's yeah. the kind of response that I'm talking about. You know, y'all are interested and we appreciate that. And what we really want to do is have you understand that Microsoft Teams is the hub for teamwork. That means other things work with it and that's what makes it fantastic. And so Teams and SharePoint, Teams and Yammer, a lot of Yammer announcements, you know, the year of Yammer and what they've done, the new Yammer or at uh, you know the work that we're doing in tasks and task management and that cohesion that's coming together really important uh, but also um, our custom development even the platform space where you can make those connections to line of business apps that's the richness of it right and so yes use it for chat use it for meetings that's fantastic but then you know, do the rest, <laughs> do yeah, the yeah. thing, as Donna Secker would say. That integration between Teams and Yammer I found really interesting. Yeah. Um, for people that know me, I'm a, a, I've been a slow adopter of Teams. Okay. I've been warming up to Teams over time. Sure, um, takes time. And it does, it does. And and at first I questioned the integration of Yammer and Teams, but then we spoke to Lori yesterday, Lori mm -hmm. Pamaya, um, and she explained the benefits of that. And it really is interesting how right. you can work with those two together in the same interface. It really does work well once I, I actually tried it. Yes, and you know, it. Yammer is for those communities. So the yep. story that I tell often, but I will tell again, when we launched Microsoft Teams at Microsoft, that was my project at the time, we launched it with a Yammer community because that Yammer community provided support 
for people onboarding to Teams. Because of course, at the time, now the limit is 5,000, um, but you know, at the time we have uh, 200,000 employees. So we needed that open public community and that's what that was for. And I used the team as a place for myself and the other community managers to collaborate and talk about themes for the month or what we were going to post or whatever. Um, but we had to bounce back and forth. Right, uh, or work on the tab that at that time wasn't as rich, um, but now with the app and the tab both being so rich, exactly. I don't have I can reduce context switching yeah. because that's what it's really about. Yeah. Context switching is bad for your brain. It's tiring. It creates fatigue in the brain, and it breaks your focus. So yeah. the more that I can uh, have those integrations live inside exactly. that's teams, the yeah, it's it's really a good thing. And I think that was one one when I realized what you just mentioned about context switching, how mm -hmm. Teams helps to improve that. That was really a moment for me when I saw what the benefits of team, Teams were. Yes. Um, you know, many of us have lived in email, and I still yep. spend a good portion of my day living in email. Um, but Teams helps, you know, when, when messages and information comes in, it's coming in already with a context with it. Right. As opposed to us having to figure out what that context is. Exactly. Which I think is a huge benefit to just multitasking and working on Absolutely. many different things at one time. And one of the things I tell people about adoption, uh, which is one of my areas, you know, adoption of teams is definitely my, my passion and teamwork in general, is um, to be intentional about where your projects live. So for instance, I don't spend my day in email anymore. I don't open Outlook, maybe once a day. Maybe, maybe. Um, I go look at my calendar, but I can see that inside of Teams. That's right. And so, um, really, very rarely, and I don't open Outlook, the desktop client, I open OA. I usually use it on the web at this okay. point. Okay. Yeah, and so, um, you know, that change in my own behavior, because I lived and died by Outlook, right? right? I mean, yeah. that was just yeah, yeah. my bread and butter. Yeah. Now, I do go and check it, but I get alerts from certain people, right? My boss's customers I'm working with, yeah. I have an alert set up so it'll flag me if I'm getting an email from them, yeah. that sort of thing. But I've been intentional about moving the projects that I have at work into Teams and telling the team, hey, this is where we're going to work on this, right? Yeah. Don't send me an email about such and such a project you know, work out loud in the channel for the team. Exactly. One thing people forget about is your teammates may not be the same forever. And what happens when that new person onboards, right? You want them to be able to find everything that they need to be effective in that project as quickly as possible. And if you store that in SharePoint pages for repeatable information and have the conversations in the team channels, that really helps you have a more effective uh, you know, teamwork for people who are trying to come on later on. And at Microsoft, exactly. that happens a lot. We get yeah. new people on the team quite often. Yeah. And if I have to go hunt around in a private chat or an email for what they need, you know, that's that's a thing. Absolutely. So you've touched a bit on the industry specific. Yes. Um, what are your thoughts on, in general, yeah. about the industry specific scenarios such as the vertical consultation and the patient coordination. Well, of course I love it. Um, so I have a long history in Office 365, but in, and also um, business process engineering and solution architecture, that's why I'm a business solution architect by, by trade, if you will. And the things that always made me successful when I was inside a customer, as a customer of Microsoft or in the partner space, were listening to people's problems and architecting the technology around that problem. And I, I really feel like that's what the verticals team have done. Um, but, you know, we think about the virtual virtual visits uh, scenario that applies to more than just healthcare. You know, I can imagine that for IT pros. I can imagine that for financial services. I can imagine that for a lot of different places. And so, you know, I feel like, you know, that's just the beginning of what we can do there. But also in working with customers a lot, um, what I what I see is they're also creating templates in their teams and particular ways that they want to work, like do a customer engagement uh, or, for instance, have a project template, things of that nature. So I feel like those things are going to continue to grow. And so is our investment in them. Right? And I do a lot of um, government work as well. And they definitely also have needs for certain kinds of teams and solutions. So I'm really actually excited about what's going to happen there because yeah. when we start to get into that area, I feel like as people are going to understand yet again the value of Teams. It's like a journey. You have these aha moments mm -hmm. along the way. You're like, oh, I can chat. Oh, I can chat with more people. Right. Oh, wait, these meetings are like really good. And um, I really like them. Oh, let me see what this team does. And then they hit the plus. Yeah. And then they see the apps. And right. then they start to really light up, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, um, 
the blog post really just touched on it, right? The blog post had a couple of paragraphs on yeah. healthcare in particular, but it really does, I think, open people up to thinking about lots of different, like uh, lots of other scenarios in different industry verticals that you could use Teams for. Because for us, as you know, we're long-time consultants in Office 365. Right. It's easy to see how to use it for just general collab in a business environment, but healthcare consultations. That's a brilliant use case. It is. Uh, managing patient schedules or, you know, a health team working with a patient, yep. another great use case. And then that, you know, suddenly opens you up to thinking about an industry and other first line worker scenarios where you could use it. Absolutely. But also in your own company, yeah. like every partner should be using it to, in, to engage with their customers. Mm -hmm. It is a fantastic way to do that. So if you're not, you probably, you should be in their tenant. Um, but if they are in yours, really extending that ability to have engagements with other folks, right? Get that engagement with your customers and your core constituents out of email because you don't do that in your personal life. In your personal life, you text your friends and family. You right. already have exactly. a chat-based yeah. conversation <laughs> with people true. who matter to right. you most. Yeah. So it's not really that much of a, a stretch to do that at work. You yeah, want you to be able to do that at work. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then also, you, you, you touched on a great point. First-line workers, right? You know, they're so important. Uh, there's two billion of them in the world, and these are people who are really representing your company. Uh, they're highly trained and highly skilled. They, they're out there they're doing service, having engagements. They're in the field. They're folks who don't really sit at a desk all the time. Yeah. <clears throat> They've been traditionally underserved by the kinds of solutions that have happened. Uh, and that's because of uh, data pipelines and, and other things, but also because we really haven't had enough empathy for them and what they do. Um, one of the reasons, I don't know if you've seen it, but we have this Teams toolkit that's a flip book uh, mm -hmm. view yeah. of, of how to do the adoption. That's right. Even for security and compliance, we just released one for healthcare yeah. just at this show. Um, but one of the reasons we went to that format is because if you've ever sat in a Starbucks and tried to download a 100-page PowerPoint slide deck with lots of images, you will find out that that's not a great experience. Exactly. And that's what salespeople are doing, right? right? They're trying to get access to information while they're in the field. So with Teams, it becomes much more easy in the mobile application to give them a quality experience, but also manage it. Maybe you don't want people on your manufacturing floor to be making calls, but you do want them to be able to chat with each other uh, or maybe, you know, whatever. And you might want to give them access to a custom app that you can pin on that left rail. Yeah. There's so much that we can do. And that's what makes me excited about it. I know that people are just at the beginning. You know, I had the privilege of coming up during SharePoint also. I'm old enough to remember the birth of the web. Yeah. Um, it, this is one of those moments. I know what it feels like. Right. And that's why when this project came across my desk those years ago, I thought, this is the thing. This is the thing. I'm going to hold on to yeah. this thing. I want yeah. to do this because this can help me really deliver on the promise that customers have been seeking. An integration in a smart and elegant way um, with the way that I work. Uh, we, you'll see on my show also that we um, did an interview with the product leader who his team built private channels. And I loved one of the things he said. He talked about that we want the product to support your natural way of working. You shouldn't have to change your way of working to, for us to use our product, right? There shouldn't be any unnatural acts going exactly. on there, right? Um, and so we feel like, especially with that mobile scenario, that it's very natural to chat to people. It's very natural to take a picture and send it to somebody exactly. for information. Yeah. We just happen to be doing it in a first-line worker scenario or, you know, mm -hmm. me here in the field talking with people back in, in Seattle. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah. it's fun. I, I'm super passionate about it it's because I think it's really exciting yeah. and you know, it really leverages all of my work across all the services. You know, I'm a, a deep SharePoint person, um, and I love SharePoint, and there's lots to do there. Yeah. I think one other topic we'd like to ask you about, and this is something that we see in the field a lot, where customers ask us about, um, you've, I'm sure you've heard this before, should I use Teams or should I use SharePoint? Mm. And it's not a trivial question to answer. No, it's so not. That's what are true. your thoughts? Because you, you do have people coming from a traditional SharePoint world or a traditional collab world. And they, you know, they're very interested in teams. Often we don't have to bring up the concept of teams. They're bringing it to us. Right. But there's this question around, we already have a lot invested in you. Absolutely. So we're Absolutely. To get your thoughts on that. Well, you know, the investments you have in any technology should always be respected. Right. Um, and, and more importantly, the investments that your end users have made in understanding how to use that technology are, are gold. Really important. You want to make any change you deliver be worth it. 
both to you from a financial perspective, from an IT pro perspective, but also for those end users. So the most important thing to remember is it's not either or, it's and, especially in terms of SharePoint. Microsoft Teams cannot deliver its files experience without SharePoint. One of the things that we announced recently, of course, is that full fidelity files experience inside of the Teams client. The views are available to you. The metadata is available to you. Amazing. So you're having that full experience there. Think about the flows that you can kick off from inside of Teams using SharePoint's power there and the power, you know, powerful, our automate, excuse me, um, that we, we decided to rename this week and I've got to learn a new name. Oh, it's just killing me. Yeah. yeah. Um, so at any rate, the point is, is that all of that is really important as a foundational component of Teams. From a collab perspective and an uh, information perspective, what you need to remember too is that every time you have an Office 365 group or a team, you're getting a SharePoint site. Many times what I'm training like uh, project managers to do is you create that team. That's the place where your project team is collaborating and working. They have access to other tools. Maybe the planner is there, you know, the tasks are there, what have you, um, and they, they're storing files, but you open up to everyone in your organization, the actual SharePoint site itself, and use that as a project communication tool. Do your project reports as pages in that uh, SharePoint site. Pin those pages or use the news connector back in Teams. Um, use all the other capabilities of SharePoint and pin them inside of Teams or use the SharePoint app uh, to expose that information. It's a great way to make sure that your information about your team is also discoverable. Right, because then you can have a whole page there about how to use this team. So in my teams, there's a page, you know, how to use this team, but also who's re responsible for what on this team, basically the racy, right? Um, and so having all that information in those SharePoint pages um, aids in search and discovery and really uses those capabilities. So, you know, just because you are adding capabilities to SharePoint like chat and meetings and all the other app integrations doesn't mean you aren't using SharePoint too. If there are people who just want to go find a document, I do find myself sometimes I'll just go to the site because I'm going specifically for a document and I am a SharePoint person. But there's more people in the world who aren't SharePoint people than there are people who, who love it. And also, as you move to Teams, use this as an opportunity to clean up. Yeah. Clean house. Exactly. Um, people have unfortunately used SharePoint sometimes in an ungoverned way uh, as just a file storage repository. They really haven't used the full power of it. Uh, so now's the time to modernize, um, use and get inspired by some of those sites on the SharePoint provisioning engine. If you mm -hmm. haven't seen that, exactly. it's fantastic. I was actually just building something this morning with it for my demo that I'm doing in a little bit. Um, that's where Microsoft Learning Pathways is, but use these new capabilities to reinvigorate SharePoint and your intranet as you move to Teams. So, you know, definitely um, that for me is actually why the product is so fun. Now, I manage Skype at Microsoft. I like voice and video, um, managed video services for a long time as, as a producer, but also as a service owner. But, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a workflow geek. I'm yeah. a SharePoint geek. Yeah. I love that. That that just makes me happy. Automate. Yeah, it's yeah. just fantastic, yeah. right? And, yeah. you know, the web hooks that you can use, the, the cards of information that you can show, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's just, it's snazzy, it you know? It and is. so, and we're, one of the things that we're going to work on, our, my team does like customer accelerators. Um, and so we're working on some code snippets that will be available on our GitHub instance. I'm partnering with VESA and the SharePoint PNP yeah. team. We're going to be yeah, partnering together. Artists. Super excited yeah. about that. Um, so that we have this, we have one place to kind of bring all the goodness together. And um, I think that's going to really help people who are trying to, to do this kinds of, these kinds of automations. Whether you're an actual developer or at what I like to call an accidental developer, because you just yeah. want to get something done, mm -hmm. um, we think we can help people with some of these uh, templates and tools. And remember, hashtag better together. Hashtag better together. <laughs> yes, if you right. follow me on Twitter or LinkedIn, you will see that, you know, Teams in Planner, Teams in SharePoint, Teams in Yammer, Teams right. and, yeah. that Teams in Duo, yeah. right? So better together. And yeah. I, I will say, it also refers to the community of people we have. Absolutely. Our community is unbelievable. Lori Pottemeyer is one of the best community managers I have ever met in my Definitely. entire career. I'm lucky that she's on our team. And, you know, I've done my fair share as well. And I feel like 
you know, we're really trying to come together to help people understand how to make this transition. And, um, you know, the passion, the insight that I find from the MVPs, from the partners, from the customers, people who want to become champions or in my uh, champions program. Uh, you know, I, I feel like it's really, uh, it sets us apart. I, I don't feel like when I did sequel work that they have a community as well, but the passion that's here that comes from the SharePoint community and the Skype community that now come together, right. boy, it's it's fun. It's I have fun. to say, it's a lot of fun. And I really enjoy it. Definitely. So Love get involved, you know, go to yeah. the Microsoft tech community, come to the Microsoft Teams forum, come to the Driving Adoption blog and, and forum, which is mine, um, you know, get involved and, and find your local user groups. Um, we are going to be doing Office 365 champion mixers around the world. Um, looking forward to coming to some of those uh, Microsoft Ignite tour cities to bring the champions together. So, um, you know, it's just, it's a great time. Yeah, I'm having a lot of fun. Yeah. Can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. It's really been great talking to you today. Thank you. All thank right. you for having me. Thanks, everyone. Go teams. Woo. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome.